Good morning and welcome to St. Peter this morning. Well, we're finally there. We are live streaming today. So wave to the camera. Hello, everybody. Hopefully joining us online. <laughs> um, thanks so much to Peter Fotheringham for all the work he's put in over the last month or so, or two months, uh, getting this all set up right, uh, that we are now a uh, hybrid church again. So I'm very excited uh, that, uh, that you can see us, whether you can be here in person or not, you can uh, join this community in worship each and every Sunday now through our through our live stream. Um, today is the Feast of the Holy Trinity. We're actually trying to pack a lot in today. So Feast of the Holy Trinity today, that's why we're on white. So this is our color changing season. Went from red last week to white this week. Next week we're into green and we stay there for a long, long time. So, <laughs> so this, but uh, uh, excited today to be talking about the Holy Trinity. We're also honoring a few graduates today uh, with a brief litany that'll take place after the hymn of the day. All right. We have a new setting today. So we're doing the uh, Bread of Life setting that comes from With One Voice. If you remember the old blue book, uh, this is the Bread of Life setting. Everything you need is in your uh, bulletin and your hymns are still in your uh, cranberry color, red colored hymnal. All right, so please follow along. Uh, with those cues in your bulletin. All right. Um, oh, and after our worship service today, we do have a brief congregational meeting in order to approve um, so an expen expenditure, um, something that came up that we need to address. So please, please, please stay if you are able for a brief, very brief uh, congregational meeting after our service today. With that, let's all please stand and we'll begin our service today with confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. God of mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins Receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our gathering hymn today, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, number 413 in your hymnals. <laughs>
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. pray. Almighty creator and ever living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Isaiah chapter 11. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, 
the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. Word of God, word of life. O oh Lord, our Lord, how exalted is your name in all the world. Let's try that again. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the world. You have set us a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the to quell the enemy and the avenger. What is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You give him mastery over the works of your hands, you put all things under his feet. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. The second reading comes from Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Take it from the top. <laughs> Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 
and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I would invite the children to come forward. No, there's another one. I hope he's coming. Here he comes. Good morning. What's your name? This is Cameron. We went and actually saw, we were outside Cameron's house the other day. He was taking a nap. Yes, he was. Hi. I just have a short song I, that I wanted to share today. I think you know it, so please join me in singing. It goes, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Good and yellow, black and white, they are precious to his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. It's a great song, isn't it? You don't know that one? Oh, I have failed as a parent. <laughs> we'll teach that song. I just love this song. I think it's a great song for today, especially when we talk about the triune God. Because I think because the triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is just another way that God shows how much God loves all, all of us in this world, no matter who we are, red and yellow, black and white, all precious in his sight. Let's pray together. Lord God, thank you for all of your beautiful creation. Thank you for making us exactly as who we are. And thank you for loving us no matter what. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up. Floppy legs. There we go. <laughs> there we go. All right. So I think it's easy sometimes for us to see the Holy Trinity as a purely Christian concept. However, the Hebrew people, since the very beginning, understood that the essence of God had a complexity that actually surpassed our ability to truly comprehend. We see evidence of this in our first reading today from Isaiah chapter 11. Now this text is believed to have been written during the sometime during the Babylonian exile, some 500 years before Jesus. Yet, in this text, we get these glimpses of Trinitarian language. They're already present, even, five, even centuries before Jesus came along. There is this understanding of a divine essence of parent, child, and spirit, all wrapped up into the one true God. Now, the earliest followers of Jesus, who I think it is important uh, to remind everyone that these people were predominantly Jewish, right? That the first followers of Jesus were all Jews. They built on this complex understanding of God through their lived experience with Jesus, as well as the pouring out of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, which we conveniently just talked about last week. So hopefully that's still fresh on your minds. So Paul's letters, which are believed to be written some 20 to 40 years after the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ, are the earliest written evidence of what we as Christians now know of as the Holy Trinity. But it was far from a well-developed doctrine at that point in time. In fact, when Paul wrote, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion or fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, it was truly a unique and profound statement of his understanding of who God was. He was able to combine his Jewish understanding of God's complexity with his lived experience of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. And demonstrated just and this demonstrated just how far the followers of the way had come in only a few short decades since the time of Jesus' earthly ministry. 
That said, it would still be hundreds of years until the official doctrine of the Trinity, this idea of three persona in one essence, was finally codified by the church at the Council of Nicaea in 325. Right? Hundreds of years later. You may recognize, we get the Nicaean Creed from the Council of Nicaea, from that same council. Right? That is a codified statement of the triune God. So what is the Holy Trinity, and why is it so important for us as disciples to recognize God as triune? So this is a hard one for preachers, mostly because there is no definitive answer. We cannot open Scripture and point to one particular place that clearly defines who and what the Holy Trinity is and and why it's important. In fact, it remains one of the greatest mysteries of our Christian practice, yet in many ways it also defines who we are as Christians, right? That's quite a paradox, right? Who we are as Christians is actually one of the greatest mysteries. Though there may not be a definitive answer on who and what the Trinity is, many have endeavored an explanation. Now, in his weekly uh, newsletter, his video newsletter, uh, Bishop Craig Satterley, our bishop, uh, explained the Trinity this way. He said that God is the thought, Jesus, the Word made flesh, is the articulation of that thought, and the Spirit is the breath that carries this articulation and makes it known in the world. And without all three persons, none can exist, right? Right? That's why he's the bishop, right? <laughs> he, he has this profound understanding and idea of, who, how, of what, this, what the triune God means. His lived experience with Christ uh, his, it shows through in, this beautiful, uh, in his beautiful description of the triune God. Now, I have a much simpler explanation that I tend to use. So... When people ask, so what is this triune God? I like to say, so, now I'm just Ed. I'm one Ed. Like, there's only one of me. But throughout my life, you know, I've defined myself, or I, I have played the role of father, husband, son, brother, cousin, you know, and countless other hats, uh, pastor, brewer, these, all these hats that I've worn, right, throughout my life. Now, none of them define me fully you know, until all of them are present, right? So one, even though there's just one me, there's so many different levels. And that is the same for each and every one of us in this room, right? But no matter how we try to explain it, at least for me, our understanding of the triune God is important because of how it makes our creator accessible to us as creatures, So think about this just for a minute. We tend to name God based on how we experience the divine in our lives, right? Names like creator, sustainer, provider. Who else has a name for God that they'd like to share? Just shout it out. Spirit. Spirit. Others. Uh, Father, leader. Savior. Savior, right? These are all unique names that we hold in our heart for our Creator because of an experience that we have had or shared with Jesus or God in our lives. And this is all made possible by our understanding that God is not one-dimensional, but instead triune, and points to the fact that God desires to be in relationship with us and will always be the God we need exactly where and when we need the divine most. Now, please don't get me wrong here. This does not mean that God somehow transforms into something new every time we need God to be something different. No, this is a mystery. This isn't magic, all right? And Scripture teaches us that God is the same forever and always and maintains a singular unity of being. But God's essence is so enormous that it transcends our ability to comprehend. 
especially when it comes to the diversity and fullness of our Creator. Now, a few weeks ago, we uh, read the uh, we read the creation story from Genesis one, that narrative, that story that starts everything all off and begins that narrative of God's redemptive work in the world. Such a beautiful story of creation. And in this story, God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. And yes, those third person pronouns are exactly what is translated, is translated directly from the Hebrew. When God created humankind, it switches to third person. Some indications that that there's something more going on with God than we can understand. And in the end, after creation, God saw everything that was made, and indeed, it was very good. Now think for a moment about the remarkable and diverse, the remarkable and vast diversity that exists in the people of the world today. Some eight billion unique human beings, no two identical, Even if they share the same DNA, they are still different in their persona, if not their essence. Right? Red and, like our song talked about earlier, red and yellow, black and white, but it goes so much further than that. Big and small, short and tall, you know, masculine, feminine, and everything in between, straight and gay. It doesn't matter. All of us are created in the image of God and created for goodness. So this story of creation is one of the most important reminders, at least to me, of how the triune God desires to be in relationship with us, no matter who we are as individuals. Now, I think this is a particularly pertinent message for our graduates who are here today, right? They are taking this step, you know, in life and and, They're starting a new chapter. But no matter where life's journey takes you or them, I encourage you to remember that God loves you for exactly who you are. So please continue to be creative. Continue to try new things. But know that no matter what, God is there for you and God loves you. The good news we find in our readings today that the triune God longs to be in relationship with all of creation and is accessible to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, not only now, but until the end of time, may just be the best news of all. Amen.
you may be seated, and I would uh, now invite uh, Caleb and Addy to come forward if, you are, if you're willing to, <laughs> our graduates. So I think it's in your bulletins, but no, you don't need your bulletins. I think you're good. Um, no, I was just commenting that, uh, Caleb, you graduated from North... University of Northwestern Ohio. University of Northwestern Ohio with a dual Woo-hoo! degree, correct? In agricultural and diesel mechanics, excellent. So, um, and Addie, you graduated from Penfield High School and are on your way to, <clears throat> what, Michigan? <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll honor that today. <laughs> All right, so we'll begin uh, with a prayer. Graduates, the world has enough people who have stopped learning, who have already decided, who have fixed their minds on a few possibilities. So thank God for your learning, your creative curiosity still stirring. Your questions make a holy mess of mundane assumptions and status quo attitudes. The spirit is at work in every new thing, the discoveries and challenges of a more complex and interesting world. God delights in what you seek and find, for in you we will witness creation still becoming new. I'll ask the congregation to please respond in bold. Holy Spirit, lover of souls, you you have set set us in in this world, world, each with intention, destiny, and purpose, and and given us opportunities opportunities to know you, you, to connect with you, and to to become our best selves. Help us to be patient with the process of growth, to to even enjoy it, to dig deep and uncover whatever, to be present with the journey of life, spirit, and soul. To dig deep and uncover whatever is hidden. And bring it to light. To encounter our inner shadow without fear. To look for beauty and do its work. We set our intentions towards life and light. We know that you, that we are our best selves. When we are most aware of your grace towards us. Walk with us on this journey of life. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, graduates, receive this blessing. May God, who began this work, this good work in you, carry it through to completion, enabling you to use your talents to the fullest. May God give you the grace to make wise choices and to be faithful to your commitments, always confident in the support of those who love you. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you will live deep within your heart. May God bless you with the foolishness to think that you can make a difference in this world so that you will do the things which others tell you cannot be done. And may your integrity be a gift to the world, and may the Spirit of God be with you always. Amen. Amen. Now a round of applause for our graduates. Caleb. I have something for you. Thank you. Congratulations. And now we can stand. And with one voice in unity with the Church Catholic, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for the world in need. Holy Three, Holy One, you call the church to make disciples of all nations. 
encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel and direct all the baptized into lives of humble service. We pray today especially for the Evangelical Lutheran Church uh, in East Jordan and their pastor, the Reverend Matthew Deems. God, in, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Three, <clears throat> Holy One, you spoke creation into being and called it good. Protect lands and waters threatened by human misuse and sustain living creatures of every kind, wild animals, birds, fish, and every creeping thing. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <coughs> Excuse me. Holy Three, Holy One, you have given humankind authority over the earth. Raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern thoughtfully. Heal divisions between nations that we might agree with one another and live in peace. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always to the end of the age. Surround those most in need of your healing presence, all who, who are lonely, all who are grieving, and those who are sick, especially those on St. Peter's prayer list, Terry Glass, Dan and Linda Sane, and also for the family of Donna Marker and those we name aloud now or in the silence of our hearts. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you set the earth on its axis and we experience the seasons. Strengthen those enduring challenges this summer, those who suffer in the heat farmers experiencing drought, parents overwhelmed by childcare responsibilities, and children experiencing food insecurity outside of school. God, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Three, Holy One, you give rest when our work is done. We give thanks for, for all the saints who now rest in you confident in the promise of resurrection life in the age to come. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please show a sign of Christ's peace to those gathered around you today. Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer joy and giving that we have first given us, ourselves, our time, our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer great thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. You have revealed your glory as the glory also of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your everlasting glory. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Redeemer and healer. In the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your, in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the cup, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal as grains scattered on the hillside become one bread. So let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and know Christ, the true bread of life and fruit of the vine. This is Christ's table prepared for you. And at Christ's table all are truly welcome.
pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that we have received the sacrament of his body and blood, may abide in him and him in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May be seated for announcements. Do we have... Any announcements today? Yes, if you. I have the poster up for the um, Battle Jacks baseball game. Uh, Christian Life is planning an event to keep people together for Friday, July the 14th, which is also a faith night. Uh, playing the Kenosha Kingfish. And it's 1375 per person, and you get a hat with that. All right, so Battle Jacks, again, the day is. What day is it again? July 14th, so sign up in the narthex. Any other announcements today? Money by July 2nd. See the poster. So I'm repeating it for the benefit of anybody listening online <laughs> so that they can hear it as well. That's why I'm doing that today. Any, anything else today? So I just want to let folks know next week we're going to shake things up a little bit. So TJ is actually being confirmed uh, with his uh, confirmation class at Trinity at 11 o'clock. So I will be here. I'm going to start the service and go through preaching. And then Pastor Sherry is going to take over for the table blessing uh, next week. So you'll, you'll get to see both of us next week. All right. Um, just wanted to give you the heads up on that so you weren't uh, caught off guard next week. All right. If there are no other announcements, then uh, let's stand and receive a blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our closing hymn, Go in Peace and Serve the Lord. Number. It's printed in your bulletin. Thank you. I was just about to read. It didn't matter. those who must go in peace and serve the triune God. But for those who can, please stay for the congregational meeting that immediately follows our service today. Thanks be to God.
Can you hear me now? Oh, yay. (laughs) So if you're not a member, you don't have to stay. This shouldn't take very long, um, but don't go away. Stay in the uh, the Narthex area, have a cup of coffee, and we'll be out there shortly. Bill, will you help me count? I need a quorum of 20. Yep. Robert, Robert's rules. Where are you, Gary? <laughs> okay, we'll call the uh, special congregational meeting to order. And if you are a voting member, would you please raise your hand? I'll get this. Okay. Fifteen. Fifteen over here. Now, to give you a little history of the um, furnace that we have for our sanctuary, the furnace and air conditioner, I'm going to ask Harold from the property committee to kind of give you a little bit of background. Good morning, everyone. I guess we could say, you know, God works in mysterious ways. We go back just a little bit, a little history. You know, we, we have a total of five furnaces here in the church. And what, three years ago, we replaced the two that served the a fellowship hall and the student rooms and, and those. They, those need to be replaced. The next year, the two boilers had an issue. And they had to be replaced. And now we're at the the last one. Unexpectedly, we weren't expecting to do this. But I think God's taken care of us in steps to where we could manage our abilities. And now this furnace has totally disintegrated almost to the point where there's duct tape holding it together. And I think, as you know, uh, towards the end of uh, winter... I think there was one Sunday we didn't even have uh, heat because the furnace would not work. So it's the the last furnace that uh, services, you know, the sanctuary here that now needs to be replaced. And uh, that also means that the air conditioner um, needs to be replaced as well because the two of them are in conjunction. The air conditioner probably is serviceable, but because of Freon con- uh, you know, and the new... Um, furnaces and everything, that has to be replaced as well. When the property committee started looking into this, you know, this spring, originally we were at a cost of probably about $18,000 and debating what we were going to do, and by the time we got a final quote, um, the price has gone up about $2,000. So now we're just, I think, a little over $20,000, if I'm not mistaken, right, Barb? 20278 20, um, they are holding this price for us uh, so that we could have this meeting and get congregation approval you know for the expenditure and uh, we need to make a down payment this next week and they will hold uh, that furnace and air conditioner for us till later on this year to where we can uh, get our finances all in order and how we want to you know pay for this and I'll let you know Barb talk a little bit more about that. Are there any, any questions of, about the furnace replacement? No, I'll give it back to Barb. Okay, the furnace, as Harold said, comes to 20278 We need a 50% down payment or $10,000, $139. We were hoping that we can maybe do a fundraiser type of a thing. Um, so that we can get this furnace and air conditioner in the fall. Right now, we have some undesignated matching grant money that's come in to the tune of um, $9,671.20. We are hoping, council meets on the second Monday, we are hoping that council will vote to use part of that or all of that money as the down payment, um, and then we We've got money in the carryover 
and in the building fund. So actually, we have enough money to flat out buy the furnace if we have to, but that, that doesn't leave us with anything for other major things that are going to be coming up. Did you want to say something, Pastor? Okay. Looked like you were getting ready to stand up. <laughs> um, so anyway, our, our plan is that to use the matching uh, grant money and then money maybe from the building fund and for the down payment and then do a fundraiser so that in the fall we can have enough money to just flat out purchase the furnace nest from CTI Mechanical. So I would like to entertain a motion to, um, for congregational approval to purchase the um, furnace and air conditioner from CTI Mechanical for the price of $20,278. Jan? Rebecca seconded? Is there any further discussion? Any questions? Okay. I guess I'd go back to property. Anybody on property? You know, just being part of a conversation, I would say we looked into that. This is a 99.9% efficiency. It's, a, it's as efficient as you can buy. Okay. If you, know, I can't remember what it's, uh, like the boilers, it does have a return on investment based on our current efficiency. Okay. Um, yeah, I can't remember what that number is, but. All right, I just wondered if we looked into that. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Harold? We're going from a furnace of about 68% efficiency yeah. to practically 98% efficiency. And I don't know if the furnace is working or the air conditioner is working today, but I've seen plenty of people fanning themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, I'll call for the vote. All those who are, all voting members who uh, approve the purchase of the uh, furnace and air conditioner from CTI Mechanical for 20278 Please raise your hands. Looks like we have a majority. Any, any opposed? Okay. All right. I thank you very much for taking the time to stay and um, taking care of this very important business. And I noticed that the flowers on the altar are for the Knopf Singers, so happy anniversary. Thank <laughs> you.